It worked. <laughs> there we go. Oh, <laughs> god. Working. Hello. Oh my god, that was stressful. I was like, why isn't this working? But we're good. And breathe, my friend. Breathe, breathe. Oh, I got a head cake. Yay, go team. We're here. Hello, everyone. Sorry about that. Hi, guys. Um, welcome to tea time. Um, thank you for sticking through the five minutes of amazing issues. Um, but we're here. We are ready to rumble. Um, first of all, new addition. I am now full time glasses wearer. So I love them. I you. think they're really nice. So I'm still getting used to having like reflections everywhere when I do this type of thing. So I'm like trying to. It's annoying because you're trying to like angle your face so that there's no glare on it. Yeah. Did you, when did you get them? Uh, uh, Friday. They're really nice. <laughs> yeah. I like them very much. Thank you. Well, I've got another pair coming, so you guys can see them next week if I pick them up. So, yay. Are they, um, like, prescription ones? They are. I am blind as that, my dear. Oh, me too. It's great fun. Look at that. I do um, – sometimes I'm really bad for not wearing my glasses, and I do go through a lot of my life just kind of squinting at stuff. Yeah. And just I'm hoping like, for the best. Yeah. You know? I can't oh. see anything. Yeah. Alrighty, guys. I think everyone's filtered in for now. Um, this week, tea time, we are going to be chatting about the wonderful things that are called relationships. So, yay. Uh, um, <laughs> you're talking to a guy that hasn't been in one for seven years. So mm-hmm. great. But we're going to be talking about all relationships, so not just romantic ones, but... Um, mm-hmm normal ones as well because relationships don't have to be romantic ladies and gentlemen correct surprise surprise. friendships family all sorts so yeah yeah i think you know as human beings we're um you know that's how we focus a lot of our life is is around building little communities and building relationships so they're they're really important all nah. kinds of relationships are important. exactly um and where do we start with this one because i feel like this one we're not going to run out of things to talk about Go i know i'm right <laughs> <laughs> I know, I could talk about this all day. Uh, it's hard. I mean, I'm in a, a relatively new relationship at the moment. Oh, and um, I know, right? Thanks. Uh, and it kind of, it's hard um, at the minute because obviously we're away from each other. Um and with it, like if we were away from each other and we've been together a long time and you know how to kind of fathom situations or whatever like, and how yeah. to deal with things, then it, it, it makes it somewhat easier. But I think you're in that new stage of a relationship and you're like, I want to spend time with him. I want to be around him so much. Um, and I can't. And that's rubbish. And then last night. I mean, I'm sh- sharing so much with you guys right now. But like last night, I had full scale, like mental breakdown, and was like, "Oh my god, I, this, 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 this," and I feel really rubbish. And I'm, I'm uh, and I was, and that's the first time I've kind of done that. Um, and I feel like I, so I'm genuinely having a bit of a meltdown about it today, guys. Just say no. Anyway. <laughs> Because I'm still finding out how I deal, how, like how we deal with each other and what we both need. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. how I deal with, he doesn't know how I deal with situations yet really because you're still in that early stage where you want people, you know, you want someone to think that you're great and you haven't like unleashed the full mental yet. You know? <laughs> Uh, you are, we are you are way, we're way too alike it's crazy um <laughs> i am yet to unleash my mental like yeah. properly 
Um, um, But yeah, no, totally understand that. Um, So let's do precursors before we go any further. Guys, if you have any questions for me or Jen on the topic of relationships, use the question box down below. Um, Chat is too much for us to read. Um, So if you've got any specific questions for this topic, please leave them in the question box below. And also I forgot to save the photo. I was going to save, save a little photo. Um, We are not medical professionals. We are not here to give advice. We are here to talk through our thoughts. So take everything we say with a grain of salt. Um, Use what you want to use for you, but don't think we're telling you how to live your life or how to fix your problems. Um, Especially on this topic. (laughs) As you've already heard, we've got problems of our own. so, wow. Are you okay? Um, I just don't. <laughs> Man, it's been... You don't know where to start, do you? No. So, okay. I've got <laughs> this. Okay. This is the Bible, my Bible. And I got this from um, my ex fiance, uh, Martin. Hello, Martin, if you, if, you, if you watch this. Very nice human being, everyone. Um, but it, is, it has helped me no end in every kind of relationship. So yeah. friendships, family, you know, romantic relationships. It's so important yeah. um, to, for me, I mean, it might not be for you, but I think it's, super important to try and understand how other people work and how other people need to feel loved Mm -hmm. that's spot on and we kind of delved into this a little bit last week at the end of the mess that was last week's episode Um, (laughs) (laughs) but um but yeah understanding how other people work is integral to building any form of relationship, whether it be a friendship, family, whatever it is. Mm. If you're not understanding how other people feel things, you're just going to be throwing stones against a brick wall. If you're trying to force something somewhere that it's not going to land. Um, exactly. Yeah. And the love language is a perfect place to start because it breaks it down really easy to, understand how people interpret information because um, mm-hmm. psychology yay and if you guys have any good psychology questions save them for tomorrow because Georgia Carr is doing a takeover right here and she is a psych major she has a brain on her like a freaking goddess so throw all your psych questions her way and she'll sorry Georgia Aha. well you're going to be answering a ton of psych questions but yeah um, <laughs> but um yeah, I think no matter what type of relationship it is, you need to understand not only how people interpret ba- uh, information, but the boundaries on the information they can interpret. Um, mm. Wow, we're going deep straight off the bat. I just think, like, not everybody approach and this is not even just about relationships this is just about life everyone will approach situations differently everyone will handle situations differently and you can't expect somebody else to approach something in the exact same way as you do because we're human beings and everybody's wired differently everybody's raised differently and if you're trying so hard to love somebody in a way that they don't understand love then you're it it is literally like you're smacking your head against a brick wall so you have to communicate and understand what they need and you have to tell them what you need to feel loved yeah so you know you might need you might not need somebody to be like i love you 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 you might that's that might be just too much for you you might need somebody to do the washing up for you you know like just or somebody to to make the bed or you might want somebody to buy you flowers or you might want 
and they might want somebody to go, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. You know, you need to communicate that. You need to communicate what you need to feel loved and you need to understand what they need. And that's, that will help things to flow easier and to be more successful and give longevity. And I'm talking lots. It's the circle of life. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's a hundred percent it. Like, um, essentially the, the love languages is a really good kind of introduction to understanding how people interpret things. Um, so if you haven't looked into what your love languages are or anything like that, literally just type it into Google and go schmack, 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 because it is actually really good um, to understand how you work. And then you also understand a little bit how everything else works so you can apply it to everything else. So mm -hmm. that is that. Um, let's go. Wow, man, I am like, so out of practice i'm like trying to think of like the romantic side of things and i'm like that was so long ago <laughs> um, oh. i'm just like oh lol um lonely i am so lonely <laughs> i have no oh body. stop you're breaking my heart <laughs> this is great this is great um oh, why do you think i why do you think I'm planning what I'm planning next year, Jen? Let's be real. Come on. <laughs> Broaden that pool, my friend. Broaden that pool. Okay. Let's go on to, let's start with the basics and go friendships as relationships because um, we've spoken about friendships a lot um, because they are so important to mm -hmm. your life. And um, up and down the alley where I'm going to keep coming back to something that Jody is going to talk about in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven weeks. Um, go, your episode comes out in five weeks. Holy crap. Three weeks. Holy crap. Three weeks. Three weeks. We literally did this so long ago. Wow. Yeah, I'm like looking at the board. There's people up there that have been waiting for ages. Holy wow. But anyway. Me. Um, Me. <laughs> yeah, but we've been doing this. So we're good. We're good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um. Jodie Steele dropped a bomb on me, and I think I have said this in previous week. Um, people are in your life for a reason, season, or lifetime. And that is something, mm. ever since she said it, I was like, mic drop, we're ending the episode there, and we were like 30 seconds in. <laughs> <laughs> um, so reason, season, or lifetime. And, um, Yes, that's where I want to segue into friendships. Wow, I am so spacey today. Sorry, folks. Um, so I think that is the perfect kind of mentality to have in looking at who you have around you. Yeah. Because um, if you can identify who's in your life and what purpose they play in your life, you're not going to misplace connections or emotions and end up drastically hurt further or over that. over invest yourself in something that isn't going to serve you in your life and i am the ceo of over investing so speaking of <laughs> high here um really i'm the complete opposite oh uh, i <laughs> my mum has a theory right that everybody's either a dog or a cat Everybody in the whole world is either a dog or a cat, right? So you have your dog people and your dog people are like, hello, hello, be my friend. Okay, hello, I love you. Um, you're the best. Okay, love you, bye. Ha! Um, and your cats are like, ooh, okay. Um, I'm just going to, I'm going to sit back and I'm going to like assess who you are, what you do, what you're going to bring to my life. And if I'm, I want to be part of that. And if I, you know, I'm, if I'm on board with that and I'm a, I'm very much a cat person, but I masquerade as a dog because I'm not really a dog and people think I'm a dog, but I'm not, I'm a cat. And that's it. I feel honored. 
Because I've brought true. a whole heap of shit into your life, and this is great. <laughs> no, oh I love God. it. Computer. Pew. We're back. I'm going to turn this setting off. Um, but anyway, um, that is a great analogy. Oh, my God. <laughs> My, my mum was on here before. I don't know if she still is. Your but yeah, me the other day and I was pretty sure it was her. God love her. Did she? Yeah. She's the best. She's like amazing. she comes out with some corkers. But yeah, this is, I mean, when I meet people, I'm like, I will always be friendly. Like I'm not cold, but I, I'm always kind of, shut up. I'm always like sitting back and like, um, assessing you know yeah and yeah see i'm i'm the complete opposite i'm like Hello. it's lovely though i'm in your life now that's why i have a podcast ladies and gentlemen because i am that person that <laughs> is that person I like you. um but yeah so I don't even know where we were before we went to dogs and cats because now I like <laughs> think about it, dogs and cats. Dogs and cats. Dogs and cats. Um, dogs and cats. Dogs and cats. It's my, what were we saying? Um, about like, oh, be, being, being, um, yeah. So yes. kind of over trying to, trying to like realize what people, like, what purpose someone is going to serve in your life. My mom is here, everyone. She's here. Hey, hey Jay Dog. <laughs> She's the best. Um, also, you're supposed to be working, so get back to work, woman. She's doing the best work possible. She's hanging out with what? Me. Mm, baby kicks. <laughs> She's um, actually working for the NHS. Go and do some work. <laughs> get off. <laughs> get off Instagram. But yeah, we want to. Um, we want to. I'm not giving advice, Josh. Come on. Um, but that's something like I do all the time. I overinvest into situations. I'll get into friend like friendships or new groups, and I'll just be like, "Cool," mm. and then yeah. I'll fall straight through the other end, and I'll be like, Aah! and I'll look back on it in six months, being like, "You're a fucking idiot!" Like, what the hell? Um, so that's something we're working on. Snaps. Um, <laughs> Good, proud of you. Um, but yeah, um, so understanding who's in your life, why they're in your life, and if they need to be in your life is another huge one. Um, because yeah. if you're holding on to a whole heap of people, baggage that doesn't need to be in your life, self explanatory, really. It's just going to weigh you down, mm-hmm. make you feel like crap, and um. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, my friendship circle is it's quite it's quite small, really. Um I have a lot of people that I know and a lot of people that I do I care about really deeply, but the people that I actually invest my time in, it's it's it's, it's a super super small Mm. Circle of people. Right, right, right now, my circle is like, how many of you are there? Like ninety-seven. So there's like my circle is literally just everyone involved with six. <laughs> it's like this big. <laughs> we are good people. A bit like Marie Kondo, but with people. Yes, this is what I was talking about last week. Casey, thank you. It is. Today. It's Marie Kondo. <laughs> Does this person spark joy? No. Bye. Casey, that is pinned because that is just... Yeah. (laughs) Guys, please look at that. Marie Kondo your life. Marie Kondo your friendships. Marie Kondo your relationships. Any kind of relationship. Does this serve you? Does it spark joy? No. Bah, bitch. It's so true. It's so true. Yeah. Thank um, you, Casey. It it might take you a while to be able to get to that point where you need to, where, where you're able to do that. Don't expect it to happen tomorrow. Um, it, it took me 
five friend circles and a whole heap of breakdowns to get to that point where I can be like, <laughs> so yeah. you'll have your turning and point. It's, where hard. You, where you... it's hard in, in the job that I do because oh, you're thrown together. The worst <laughs> oh my God. You're but you thrown also together don't with different wanna... groups of people and you're yeah. expected to kind of all get along and yeah. not everyone's going to get along. It's that's, that's literally just how life works. Not everyone's going to like everybody. People are going to have qualities that don't, they don't mesh. They don't gel, you know? Yeah. Um, and it's important also to understand that and to understand that you don't, not everybody has to like you. That is a very important lesson also. Not everybody has to like you. Unless they're a casting director. No, I'm joking. <laughs> Even still. Um, now, now we're giving career advice, Jen. Look where we are. <laughs> Please um, don't take any career advice from me. Um, but yeah, I, I don't even know where we are. People don't have to like, not everyone has to like you. Yeah, essentially, like, that's another thing. Like, the, the, the quicker you get that mindset, that you stop trying to impress everybody Um, because that's a bit blunt to say it, but that's why successful people are successful because likes of Bill Gates and Steve Jobs and anyone that has all the money in the world didn't give a crap what people thought about them, didn't care if anyone liked them. They were willing to do whatever they needed to do to get to where they wanted to go. Um, so mm. it's all about understanding the whole of needing somebody and wanting somebody or yeah, that's pretty much the only two, but you need to, I mean, I, I think like, of course you're always going to want people to like you Yeah. because I, th- I think if you literally don't care at all, if anyone likes you or you don't care at all what people think about you, there's something a little bit sociopathic in there, you know? Like, you, people do, like, you, you, I mean, I don't know. Like, there's, if if you are completely detached from wanting people to like you, that's a little bit, to me, I mean, this is just my opinion, but I'm a bit like, ooh, all right. But, like, Um, look at any serial killer documentary on Netflix right now, and if you've been spending your time like I have this quarantine, um, I've watched a lot of them. Pretty much all of those people segregate themselves from society in some way, um, either through a mental thing where they think they're better than everybody or the side of not needing anybody. Um, but, like, it's a matter of, yeah, just kind of it's, – it's figuring out the right people. And that's kind of where – I keep coming back to it. Like, quarantine is – such a blessing that you can be like oh, yep yeah, cool don't want you like bye yeah see you later <laughs> um yeah allow yourself that time to like assess allow yourself this time to assess what kind of person makes your life better mm. yes you know you know i know i know that's why i've got you, you know. thanks baby cake um i am a dream <laughs> <laughs> I'm a dream all right let's talk i still i honestly don't even know how to talk about romantic relationships right now like how do i I feel like I've never been in one. That's how long it's been. Like, <laughs> it's like, oh. I mean, yeah. I think at the moment, romantic relationships are hard. They are like, if you're not living with your significant other or with a significant other, like if you're not, it, it I'm finding it, really really hard yeah 
and like I've been seeing that a lot recently like on Instagram of like people that I follow on Broadway and that type of thing that had really close people when they've gone home mm-hmm. because New York shut down those relationships have fallen apart and it's like whoa mm-hmm. you were together for like three years like holy crap <laughs> like it's yeah it's I mean I'm I don't know I I'm not a, I'm not really the biggest divulger in my personal life. Um well, you don't have to and I'm not going to force. I mean I'm not I'm not like I'm not adverse to it, but a lot of the time I I like to kind of try and keep it separate. Because <clears throat> it ends up because th- this is a lesson that I've learned um that it it gets it gets super super messy and it can it can like talking about things on social media or posting about things on social media it ends up being quite it does end up being quite messy and and for the most part i now and now i'm older yeah. i've i kind of want to keep it keep it that's, separate and that and especially because it's, it's it's quite yeah. new i just want to like keep it safe yeah. and put it in my pocket you know I used to be like just the to... complete opposite. I used to be like post everything. Like I used to <laughs> yeah. live on social media. And Me too. In, the, in the last like two, three years, I'm like, cool. Now we're only going to put out a very specific picture. <laughs> and I've like honed it into this is what you're going to see. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So, yeah. So I just, I, I feel at the moment like my, my romantic relationship is like a precious little egg and I just want to keep it safe and don't want anything bad to happen to it. And I just want to nurture it and put it in my pocket and make sure it's okay. <laughs> you know, I feel like I want to cry today. I'm a bit of a mess. <laughs> Please don't. I'm Cause then I'll so cry. And then we're just going to have 27 <laughs> minutes. of us bawling our eyes out. <laughs> Oh, I really miss him quite a lot. And I'm quite sad about it today. <laughs> Sorry, guys. We are getting real. <laughs> I just got tired. <laughs> oh. Anyway. At least she's relatable, guys. Woo! Yeah, you know how we said we hide ourselves on social media, guys? You're about to get, like, the legit side of parts of it. Here I am. I think I'm a full crazy. (laughs) (laughs) So, yes, anyway. um, (laughs) Crying on Instagram Live like an absolute bitch. Um, (laughs) So, okay. (laughs) Ah. Don't laugh. (laughs) <laughs> oh god anyway guys yeah. um i think to me it's very important to keep my personal life personal hmm. you know and keep my my romantic life personal Look, because we, for all of it's you very, guys very that special. don't watch youtube we can't be alfie and zoella um Alfie and Zoe have a weird, crazy relationship where they they got together on camera, like, and they spoke about how they. So they're essentially vloggers that were doing like Aww. this. They spent like two years filming. Like Alfie would film pretty much every single day of their lives for like Aww. two, three years straight, and like they that sounds awful. Everything on social media, and they they like they've started feeling it back the last like couple of weeks uh, like couple of weeks couple of years um mm. but like they lived their whole life through youtube through instagram and all of that and i think if that is what you're striving for in a relationship where people see how happy you are you're never truly going to be happy Look, we got to the point eventually. We needed tears, but we got there. If you're trying to, prove... <laughs> uh. <laughs> um, if you if you're trying to prove to the rest of the world how cute you are as a couple or how happy you are, it's fake. Like, yeah, 
Like Because nobody is that happy all the time. Look at every single celebrity couple. Most of them fake every single photo that you see online because they can't yeah, afford to put I mean, screen up. <laughs> this is the thing. Like I think again, this goes back to social media and, and you this is what you're seeing is is an incredibly doctored and edited version. And I think people need to understand that relationships all relationships are never perfect. Like, you know, the dynamics that you have with your family are never going to be perfect. You know, nobody has this perfect family that people want to have. And nobody has all these perfect friendships. Like, nobody has these perfect relationships. Mm -hmm. there, there are always going to be bumps and there are always going to be, you know, little things that need to be ironed out. But no, again, nobody will post about those kinds of things. Nobody, like, will sit there and go, like I just did, like, last night I was a complete mental. <laughs> last night I was like, oh, I'm having a breakdown, please just love me. You know? It's, nobody will post about that. But it yeah. happens. That and I think it's important to know that it happens. Because yeah. you, as, as soon as you stop striving for perfection that's when you gain longevity because yeah. you'll communicate and, and you'll like, iron out the things that are difficult and then and they'll become less difficult oh what you can filter instagram lives Stop. yes hon. oh um i was just trying to i don't even know what i was trying to bring up but um Something I didn't know, and for all the guys that are in the chat right now, because I know there's a ton of guys out there that jump into these lives, um, this week was Men's Mental Health Week. Um, pretty much Ooh. putting emphasis on the fact that it is okay for guys to cry um, because there's a massive stigma um, still, even with the current world climate, um, on men men's mental health, not to... Mm -hmm. No, no. Analysis, but um, it's okay to feel what you're feeling. Um, oh, I'm pretty sure that's in our podcast, Jen. I'm pretty sure that it's whole, okay to feel what you're feeling. Yeah, I feel like that's um, it's totally true. It's, I think that it, you, are, you dropped. Um, yeah. But like, if you can work through and understand your own emotions, you're just going to be a happier person overall if you can understand cool this i am starting to feel sad cool i'm feeling sad yeah cool and you can address emotions you can understand how you need to deal with them and deal with them you're going to be let's say stable as a good word because you're going to understand how to manage your ups and downs so they're not diagram number one from episode number one um yeah you want a kind of... And I think that's the same with relationships. I think you want, you don't, you, you want this little... Yeah. This little wave, you know? Because if you've got it's, the other thing, there's something wrong. Everybody's <laughs> wanting this. Everybody's wanting this all the time. And with this comes this. Because you're striving for this, everything else is this, you know? Yeah. And I think... Stop striving for the, for the, that, those dopamine hits all the time. Those those special moments are they are special moments because they're special. You need to find joy in banality. You need to find joy in mundanity. Is that a word? In the in the mundane. Yeah. Try and find joy in the mundane. Is mundanity a word, though? Because that would be a sick I don't know. I'm not sure it is. I think I might have pulled that out of my thumb. Hey, if not, we're <laughs> putting it in... No, it is. Mundanity! Mundanity. Banalities. Is it a word? The condition or I quality of being so mundane. Funny. I am so clever. Um, Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, she's here every week. Clever. She's here every week. <laughs> I am really intelligent. Um, so, yeah, let's open it up to questions because we've got 20-odd 20, 20 minutes. Does anybody have any questions related to uh, relationships that you would like to ask? Um, we do have one that came in 
early, early, early. Um, what is it? How do you go about getting over a crush that you have no chance to live? Sis, I am the pro at this because I get these all the freaking time. Um, but why do you think you have no chance is my question. <laughs> why, why, why put that negative spin on it? Why do you think you have no chance? I don't know. I... Recently for me, distance, but, like, that's just a personal thing. Um, yeah. But, like, yeah, if you're <laughs> – I'm a very big believer in the whole league system as well. I'm like, oh, yeah, she's out of my league. I, I literally do that all the time. Really? Uh, yeah. I don't oh, – I don't know. I think if you have a – a connection with someone if you have like a a rapport with somebody i don't think like a league is the thing i don't know i don't know i mean i think i just have a kind of my own mental kind of block from previous relationships that i'm just like eh. yeah like I, I kind of expect the negative so it's like, ah, but that is a that is a self confidence thing, isn't it? That is a you need to kind of yeah. reevaluate why you think that of yourself. Reevaluate yeah. why you, why you feel like you don't have a chance. Yeah, because it's relationships are not about this person looks like this and is like this and I'm like this. Therefore, that we we don't match. No, no. If you have a connection with someone and, and you feel like you could have something, go for it, hun. And if they say no, they say no and they're a dick. Bye. Or if, uh, you know, this is, I just, I don't, maybe to you it's because I'm time, old Next time I develop a crush, I'm just going to message you and be like, Jim, this is it. <laughs> this is this the is moment it. we've been training for. <laughs> Do it. This is what we've been working for our whole lives. Go for it. Oh, my God. You know? Just go oh. for it. And, if, they, and if, if they're not into it, okay, cool. Never mind. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we have questions called war. Yes, so that's good. Um, anyway. Germs, chat, and shit. Opinions on yeah. second chances. Um, <laughs> depends on the situation and um, what has happened. <laughs> because I'm 95% a negative on second chances. Um, really depending on the situation yeah i'm a huge believer in second chances in terms of like cheating no. i would i think that's difficult and if you have the mental capacity to deal with that you're a better person than i am because i'm like no bye and yeah. I, I went through a relationship where i i had somebody cheat on me repeatedly and I took him back and took him back and took him back and took him back. And it really, I think it, it really, it, it did something to me as a person. It kind of, and, uh, I've, I've been friends with people that have gone through the similar thing and it kind of, yeah. dim, it kind of diminishes your self-worth in your own head. Cause you're like, oh, completely. like, you're like, you think that's everything to you in that moment. And yeah. the fact that you're not good enough proves that you're not good enough because he needs like they need to go you're elsewhere. and it's a vicious circle you're allowing yeah. you're allowing someone to make you feel like that and because you've allowed them to make you feel like that then you will keep feeling like that and then you think you're never going to find anyone better and you're just in this horrible horrible circle so i think in i've learned that in terms of that no bye but if somebody you know if somebody does a does a balls up and and makes a mistake and they come back and they say, I done fucked up, friend. Um, and, you know, they admit it and they go, I'm really sorry. And they prove or not prove, but they they show you that they're willing to change or do something to make it better. Then great. I think actions speak louder than words in terms of yeah. in, in, in those situations yeah. for sure. Yes, I have been way too. Whoa! Um... It's whether you have the strength of character to forgive, as well. 
And you, as the person who is doing the forgiving, you have to be prepared to like to push that aside and forget about it. Because it, as soon as you hold on to things and make it a thing, then that's not productive for either of you either. Yeah. In any situation, you know. We got more questions. We do, but they're a little more kind of in depth. Um, I like in depth questions. Yeah, but more kind of like the in depth that we shouldn't be delving into in depth. Oh, this sure. is a good one. Though. How can we make real friends? I always feel like I'm worth less, not worthless, because no one puts me first. That means you. To me, reading that, you're surrounding yourself with people that kind of are wrong for the situation. Um, you need to toxic cleanse and. And I think making real friends, I... <laughs> Bella Finnegan did post a comment in the chat a little while back. Um, and we touched on this, I think, last week as well. I'm not going to be able to find it. Mm -hmm. Essentially, yes, there. Um, if you're still in school, um, pretty much any friends you've got right now aren't real friends. Um 95% of the people that you are in circles with or socializing with right now, you will not be socializing with or be friends with in two, three years. Um, so yes. if that's the situation you're in, don't stress because things get better. Um, you just need to find your squad. Find what high it's school true. musical table you sit at. <laughs> it's true. And I think, you know, from every job that I've done, I've, you, you know, you, you remain kind of friendly with people and you'll see people that I've, I've see people that I've worked with and I'll be like, oh my God, I absolutely love you. But there's only a handful or one or two people that you take from, from each like part of your life. Yeah. Um, you know, I've got my best mate, Soph, um, is the the only person that we weren't even in the same year at school. Um, but she's the only friend that I have that I speak to regularly or see regularly, um, from my school days. And you've been One. in school a little longer than me as well. Um, I've, I've, been, <laughs> I've been out of school since the dawn of time because I'm ancient, but, um, you know, I'm almost yeah. 31 guys. <laughs> oh, I just turned 24, mate. Ugh. I am so jealous <laughs> of you and your youth. <clears throat> How was your birthday, by the way? Did you have a nice day? Um, didn't really do anything. Weird. Just kind of a weird chilled day. out. Yeah, just... Yeah. It, it's... Yeah, just kind of vegged out. Didn't really do much. That was pretty much it. It's cool having like friends in different time zones though, because your birthday really goes for forty eight hours. Because like I had to... <laughs> you have a massive birthday. You're thirty. I thought you were one hundred and seven. Thank oh, you, Becky. I'm hoping that was just a joke, because that's savage. Of course it is. Because I thought you were one hundred. It's your birthday today. Birthday. You're turning sixteen. Happy sixteenth birthday. <laughs> Congratulations, you've made it this far. Now keep going. Congratulations, you are half my age. Have a great day. <laughs> um, Let's just make Jen feel <laughs> bad about herself. <laughs> we love you, Jen. Thank you. <laughs> uh, um, by the way, I have a complex about my age. I don't know if, you, uh, if you've all gathered, but... Uh... <laughs> Yeah. Ah! oh my god i hate it yeah there are things about it that i'm like this is great and i have i feel like i have like a lot of wisdom from you know that i can <laughs> i feel like that number 24 bro <laughs> i'm like that i can in parts yeah. you know yeah but like <laughs> I, you know, when I was younger and I was like, I'll have this by the time I'm 30. I'll have this by the time I'm 30. I'll have this by the time I'm 30. Guys, the things that you think you're going to have by the time you're 30, you're not going to have. Just want to let you know. I I'm thought like I'd be married with children and have a house. I have none of those things. None of them. 
Nothing. Not a single one. I'm like, so my mum had me at, how old were you when you had me? 21? 23. Right, I just turned 24 and I'm like, I can't even imagine having a kid at this age. <laughs> like, I'm like, bro, I'm like a train wreck as a human being. Like, <laughs> I'm almost the first one. And I'm like, <laughs> I mean, I've wanted children for so long. And I think I'd, I'd be a lovely mum, guys. Uh, but Man, I would love to be in your household my as your mother. <laughs> would, and bit, well, that too. But it just, it, it'd be so much fun. Oh. It's, um, sign me up. You yeah. Can adopt me. I think, I mean, I don't know. It's, it's early days, but if you met my other half, you would also, uh, be like, yeah, maybe not. Maybe not. <laughs> oh, everyone's Jen kids. Thanks guys. <laughs> everyone's like, we're all your children. Thank you guys. Takes a brief. <laughs> Just thinking about how the fact that some of these people are probably young enough to to be your kids um yes yes some of them are yeah yeah <laughs> anyway let's get off jen's age because jen and david are mine and becky's parents <laughs> lol, uh, lol. Um, so jen we have like 15 minutes to go mm -hmm. um no new co questiones have come in um, ask some questions. Ask I will some like questions answering questions. <laughs> that aren't like legit specific. Again, we're not here to give advice on specific situations. We're just no, Christ. Um, as you can see, we're both masses of human beings. Um, we are not in the mental capacity. I am a hot mess. Like, I'm an actual hot mess. Woof. Like, woof. Oh, I'm just like, life is just... The trouble with school is they always try to teach the wrong lessons. Oh, man, can someone pass me his book? Please. I can't sing or dance, but we can try. Um, <laughs> <laughs> believe me, I haven't kicked out enough of them to know. I've been in for Wicked so many times and I've never got it. So I I, I, yeah. I think I've, I've given up on that dream. Hey, given Jen, up on that pipe dream. I've given up on that pipe dream after four amateur productions. Go team. I love it. <laughs> I miss my job, guys. Just oh, let I, you know. I love it too. It's just, I don't know. You know the self? The self. I miss my job. Is there anything you don't miss, miss right now, Jen? Huh? Is there anything you don't miss right now? Yeah. <laughs> I don't... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't miss... Uh, I don't miss going on public transport in London. I don't miss that. That's horrible. Don't like that at all. Um, no, guys, I've set I myself a miss. challenge too. Just before Jen finishes the list, I'm gonna have Jen's accent down pat by the end of tea times. All right? Really? I don't have an accent. I don't. I don't know where. I mean, my accent fluctuates from sentence to sentence. Sometimes I'm really northern. Sometimes I'm like southern. Sometimes I'm. I don't know who I am or where I am or what I am anymore. <laughs> I don't miss spending thirty pounds a day in Pret a Manger. That's what I don't miss. Tell you that. I don't miss going to places that there where there's nothing to do. I don't miss that either. Anyway. I spend a lot of money in Pret, guys. So Wait, do you, know. you guys actually have Pret in the UK? Yeah. Do you Wait. say that like it's a surprise? Do you have Pret in Australia? Wait, are we talking like food or are we talking about the actual chain? The chain! Pret Manger. Yeah, we Pret don't have Pret. yeah, we don't have Pret here. Do you not? No. It's so overpriced. It 100% is. I eat it every time I go to New York, though. Um, 
I just <laughs> I there's one bright Andy, that's a great way to put it. A hundred percent. What? An accent. <laughs> you said accent the weirdest way possible. <laughs> I don't have an accent. <laughs> an accent. <laughs> I don't know. Look, I get accent need... all the time about no, my I'm... accent. I'm like, where are you from? How many accents do you have in your arsenal? A lot. Can you, like, be my accent coach? Yeah, like, for I sure. Wanna, I want to... <gasps> Clive's passion pot. Someone's just talked to me about Clive's passion pot from Pret, and it's it's so good. It's so good. I just want to have a moment to talk about Clive's passion pot. It's like passion fruit in like a little, like 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 a kind of ganache with like a little white chocolate with some meringue on the top. Holy Jesus, it's so good. Ah! It's amazing. That's all I've got to say about it. If it's still there, when Pret reopens, everyone get a Clive's Passion Pot. It tastes like a Solero. Um, anyway. But yes, can you be my accent coach? How many accents? Yes. Because I've got two. I've got like a really basic British one and then I've got an American one that's kind of chicago and but kind of Canadian. I'm going to stop you there, okay? British accent is not a thing. I know. That's why I need like all the No, different... no. Like you either have an in like it's an English accent. Like, it, like if you're going to say like I have like a generic British accent – not a thing like you could say that i have like an, an english accent or like i can kind of do like an english accent or like, a, like an rp which is received pronunciation just let you know um which is kind of like generic posh english but like when people say a british accent right because britain covers scotland wales england and northern ireland so like they are all very different things. So I get really annoyed when American people American people do it a lot. Oh my god, like what a cute British accent. No. No. Hate it. Thank you. Anybody else feeling attacked right now? Just me. Just me. It's a pet peeve. It's a pet peeve. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> so Can you give me your English accent? Oh my god. Do we really want to go into this? Yeah, okay. There it is. Pretty easy. Yeah. Oh, that I've, wasn't bad. I've actually got a pretty good one. It makes it easier that our accent is actually really close to yours. It's just a different mouth kind of thing. But it, yeah, it kind of Your slides. Mouth sounds the... a little wider than yeah. than ours. Yeah. Yeah. Wider. So all you got to do is, is kind of like just for us, you got to like, talk from the nose. It. For the British, you got to talk from the like the tip of your lips. From the lips. Yeah, so it's like, like it's it. like you're. Yeah, so everything is very forward because we're, we, we want to get like, everything done quickly, you know? We're like right here. <laughs> yeah. You're like then, there, no, and, and yeah, the best is right as well. And, you're like what? American, like right American is like the top of your mouth and to the... To I mean, the, it depends. It depends yeah, where you're depends from because you can I, have that... So I had like a an, uh, an accent coach come in when we did... Uh, I did Million Dollar Quartet and... Um, she said that accents very often reflect landscapes. So oh. like, yeah. So if you're thinking about somewhere like Texas and, and, and down in the South, everything is quite hot and flat and it's not very hilly. So it's, everything's quite wide oh. and flat in your bathrooms, you know? Yeah. <laughs> And if, I but love, if you, I if you really think about, want a southern accent. Like, the southern accent's my thing. But then if you think about, like, uh, like a Welsh accent, um, the Welsh, uh, like, landscape is quite hilly. So everything is, has that kind of bounce to it because there's a lot of hills, you know? You want me? I'm hiring you. <laughs> <laughs> this is it. Anyway. Um, anyway. Cool, we'll chat about that we've later. Totally, <laughs> we've totally digressed. <laughs> we we're talking about relationships. Yeah. And now I'm just like, let's have an accent oh. class. <laughs> Man, that was great. What's your Scottish accent like? 
very good. Yeah, it depends if you want to go like. Uh, see, now oh, I've kind of picked it up. That transition so, was so good. It depends. So you've got like your west coast is quite throaty, uh, so that like is quite far back in the throat, or you can go a little bit lighter and go towards the east coast, which is like a bit more forward and a bit more. It's a bit. It's a bit lighter in terms of vowel sounds. It's higher in your palate as well. Yeah. Accents are my favourite thing, guys. I love them. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> it's my job. <laughs> Glaswegian cleave. Uh, it's people are putting Glaswegian cleaves. Okay, so my my agent. The best relationship is Miss Bunny and Buns. Correct. Um. My agency has a London branch, a North branch, and a Glaswegian branch. Like they're Scottish branch. So when we were in Glasgow, I met with Paul, who is um, head of the, the Scottish branch. And he was like, oh my God, oh my God, please do a Glaswegian Cleves. Please do a Glaswegian Cleves. He's like, I will pay you to do a Glaswegian Cleves. But then I got told I wasn't allowed. <laughs> so yeah. Anyway. Man. <laughs> Guys, you are so lucky. This is going to be going up as an IGTV, so you can watch the last ten minutes on repeat. <laughs> <laughs> you can see me cry. Oh. You can see me do some different accents. You basically just watched me have a meltdown and show you all that I'm a little bit schizophrenic. Sorry, sorry about it. <laughs> oh. But Loki, that, that so sounds- yeah. That that's our new quarantine project is excellent coaching. Yeah, that's it. Great stuff. Easy. Oh. All right, guys. Let's uh, wrap things up. Final questions because we've got about four minutes. All right. Um, so final questions. At this point, it can be about anything. Um, just not six. Anything but six. Because if yeah. you want to hear six stuff, you can listen to the podcast in three weeks. Um, you can hear me talk about all things six. <laughs> I can't even remember what we spoke about, mate. It was so long ago. And it was so it long. Was so, it was so long. <laughs> As you can tell, um, we're very good at talking. <laughs> I do the good talkings. I do the good talkings, friend. Oh, look at that. We've got a minute 55. We have even less time. Um so in that case, we're just going to wrap things up. Um, sweet. All right. So I don't even know. Five, yes. Five love languages. That's the take. Have a look. Like, even, even if you don't want to read the book, because there there's a lot of, like, wanky stuff in there. Uh, but, you know, that you kind of have to sift through. But do, like, Google it. Have a look. Um, yeah. Good. How did David convince you to play Miss Bunny? I'm he sent more, me a onesie in the post and told me I was going to do it. I'm more intrigued <laughs> about this Grinch impression. But before we get to that, um, <laughs> tomorrow, Georgia Carr, takeover right here on Oz Queendom. So check that out. Next Friday, we have uh, Amelia Walker, so par from Breakaway Takeover. We're going to get Shaxx back. We're going to get Jen I read on. with her in my audition. Amelia. Um, Amelia, yeah. She's she amazing. was, she, I remember her. She was, so, I remember her just being so beautiful as a human. Uh, anyway, got to go. <laughs> Grinch, Grinch impression, go. No! <laughs> That's it. I have nothing to wear. I'm not going. That's the best That's it. One. I'm not going. <laughs> <laughs> Six and that's- o'clock. Jazzercise. That's it. I'm not going. And that's all I'm saying. And I'm going to go. Okay, love you. Bye. Send me your address. I'm sending you a onesie, and that's the next thing you're going to do. Absolutely not. <laughs> all right, guys. We'll see you later. See you next week. <laughs>